here we are. So, welcome to episode one, season one of Jesus and Anthony. We are going to uh, basically go do an oral history, which spans 16 years of the annual Latino Greek Summer Step and Stroll Show that took place in New York City. Started in 1999 and went to 2014. Along the way, we met a lot of great people, a lot of great teams, uh, some instrumental people that helped build this huge legacy. Uh, and we want to thank them along the way. Uh, in terms of teams, we want to speak about Lambda Sigma Upsilon, which was a dominant, the Kings of Stroll, a dominant Stroll team um, from who had a, a 10 year basically reign of undefeatedness. And, as Jesus, you, 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 you mentioned, they are still undefeated, uh, never been beaten. That's to this that's day. <laughs> right, right. Uh, and then we will also speak with, uh, speak about Kai Upsilon Sigma, the Queens of Stroll, who had a similar dominant reign, uh, but theirs lasted about three years. Uh, so again, so basically, we're, you know, we're going to talk about all these shows we did in between. Uh, in addition to that, we all talk about a college magazine, University Latino, which we also helped start a national college tour, which went to a lot, uh, all the major cities. Uh, and what do you want to add to that, Asus? What other things were we talking about overall? Yeah, I think, I think you covered most of it, just to tell the audience that's listening that really doesn't know us. Um, you know, we are a couple of guys who met in college and, uh, you know, connected because of our ability to work well together. And uh, we had a vision. Well, you know, Anthony had a vision and I, I tag teamed along and, and working together, we were able to really grow a national program that no one else was doing, no one else had done. And even to this day, I don't think there's another one like it at the moment. So it was really uh, at the inception of a lot of kind of joining forces in the marketplace. You know, there's this advent of, of Latino, there's, you know, with JLo and, and Ricky Martin contextually and mainstream, but uh, also there was this entrepreneurship drive um, that we really were able to kind of sit on the forefront of. So as I think you mentioned, we met a lot of great people coast to coast, uh, even internationally along the way. and. Uh, we're going to talk about really interesting memories, interesting moments, and how it all evolved. Yeah, that, that that's a great point um, that you mentioned earlier in terms of like a Latino focused national college initiative. Like, right, the, it, we were the only ones doing it back then. From uh, officially, the college tour was what what years would you say? We started so? in '02, I believe, and, that, and that went to what to what year? Uh, it, it was sponsored and, and running through, I think, 2009, or, or actually even beyond that, because we were able to continue with Greekster, so, which we'll talk about, you know, in an upcoming episode, but so, so 2014, I think, was when we were officially uh, out there hitting multiple markets, multiple cities with these major events. Right, so things that we're going to cover in this podcast are uh college life latino events entertainment all the different entertainment events that we we did um we'll talk about some business key business aspects things that we realized along the way uh we'll be giving advice in terms of how to do things better than the way we did them that we were learning on the fly etc so you know hopefully there's a lot of things that people can learn but yeah in terms of the national scope of what we were doing and the college aspect yeah i don't know the the issue is that a lot of major sponsors or companies don't they know that the latino mark college youth market is important but they never really wanted to fund it at least not through our uh you know events but uh all right so let's go back i don't know if you want to add anything before we start no no let's let's jump in all right so uh yeah, we're going to start 1999 uh, at Roberto Clemente State Park in the Bronx, New York. So basically, um, 
I'm going to read a little the, uh, the the quote unquote mission statement that was on the Latino Step website back in, in, in 99 or 2000. So basically it says, um, in summer of 99, Anthony Aldano and Neta Bahani embarked in a mission that created the first all-inclusive Latino Greek summer step and stroll show at Roberto Clemente State Park, Bronx, New York. As coordinators, we felt the Latino Greek community needed an event that brought everyone together in a setting other than the normal party routine. This event was given, has given Latino Greek organizations an outlet to express their unique and creative qualities on a grand scale and showmanship level. The show would demonstrate the essence of what brotherhood and sisterhood is all about, working together and unity, and how dedication and teamwork illustrate an excellent performance. So that was the endeavor uh, that we set out on. And immediately, I think Neta and I had two different uh, I guess ideologies. Uh, she wanted to promote the unity aspect of it, which I was, you know, I wasn't against it, but then, you know, just when you have two people working on something, you know, one person says A, the other person says B. So I think that was part of uh the, the beginning of seeing how like it, yeah it's going to get a little complicated and it might get messy and, and and as you as you'll see it did it did get very messy at the end how did and um then, can, can you talk a little bit about before you jump in can you talk yeah. a little bit about how you and Neta first connected and how that the idea of building a show like this actually started yeah 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 um i think Neta and I had become, we, we, we were just friends. We, I guess, I, I want to say we met at a uh, Latin Quarters Greek Unity, one of those Latin Quarter parties on the old Latin Quarters on 96th and Broadway. In New York City, think, right? Yeah, yeah, in New York City. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, once, uh, I guess at the time, I, I, so I'll, I'll, I'll back up a little bit. So basically, at, when I was younger in college, I had a lot of this pent up energy that I needed to like release in certain ways and forms. And uh, I, I don't know, event planning or bringing people together or something that kind of made me happy. Um, so I had this idea, I was like, man, we should just do this, you know, step or stroll show. Cause you know, I, we, we would see the black Greeks doing their, their thing on campus and it was great and it was awesome, but there wasn't really, there was nothing for us. You know, there was black Greek stuff and that was it really in terms of that that aspect of Greek life. And, you know, it just so happened that me and Etta were friends at the time and I mentioned it to her and she was like, yeah, I'd like to help. And that was it. And then we, we spent the, the, the next three years, right? Putting, was it three years? Putting, putting shows together. So that, that's basically, yeah, how, how we met or yeah. how, we, how we started. And just to frame up the uh, Latino Greek scene back then yeah. in 99, um, you know, basically, for those who weren't around back then, um, you know, it was, as Anthony mentioned, there were a lot of events mostly put on by other organizations that weren't in our space in the market. And uh, there really wasn't anything unique to Latino Greeks out there. I mean, everyone had their conventions and their galas and their parties and their cultural events and there, but there was nothing different, nothing really different. And so uh, a show like this, uh, an idea like this was really groundbreaking. And I think uh, as we talk more about its development, we'll go into kind of the things that made it just spectacular. Right, 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 right. And it's kind of one of those things where like, we just didn't fit in anywhere. Like you don't fit in with the black Greeks, you don't fit in with the white Greeks you don't fit in with the Asian Greeks. There were a few Asian Greeks back then. I'm, I'm assuming there's like a lot more now. But like, you know how you, culturally you don't fit in in groups. So then you have to kind of, all right, well then let's just do something for ourselves. So um, that, 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 that was a part of it. And luckily I had all this energy back then to want to do something and we were able to do it uh, or do something. So, so, so um, I guess I'll get into now more of so all right so then once Neta once I once I found that Neta was like yes let's do it I'll help you that was a great help because as, as if anyone knows if anyone listening 
has like an entrepreneurial idea or has started something, or even if it's not even a business, it's a, you want to do Latino week at your college, or, you know, you want to start a new initiative. You, it's tough to do things by yourself. Like it's very difficult to do anything. You always need like a good, you need a team of people, but at least you need one other person that like help and support you and, 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 and keep things going. So that, that, that was Neta really um, back then. So, you know, I have to give, Neta, a, a tremendous amount of thanks and, and credit because without her, you know, I wouldn't have been able to do it. Um, so when when once we started, decided we we're going to do it, I guess you know the two the two things you got to start when you're when you're doing an event like this is the two main components is you need to have teams in the show, and then you need to have a venue for the show. Uh, so with the venue, uh, because this was this wasn't like a for profit event, it was a very it was a free, like, hey, show up on uh, July, what's the date here? July 24th, 1999 at 10 a.m. at this Bronx, uh, you know, gymnasium. Um, so we, we, we were asking around on trying to find out how we can get a free, uh, a free space for, to, to hold this venue. And then luckily, Karen Pedrosa of Hermandad de Sigma Iota Alpha Incorporated, uh, was on the scene and basically she was like hey i have i have a venue i think they actually performed in the show did they Jesus? yeah they did have a team. Yeah. there you go so she had some skin in the game um you know for for the show she was working at roberto clemente uh, i'm not sure as what she had access to the venue and basically she was like yeah you guys can have the venue for free so i was like yes that's thank you very much mm-hmm. and uh because i was doing this, you know, my first time doing it, I had no idea what was important to a show. It turns out as uh, Jesus realizes the day of the show, we all realized that we were doing a step show and the floor of this gym was rubber. So if anyone's been to a step show or understands stepping, it's like when you, you have to stomp on the floor, usually a wooden floor, clap your hands, make percussive sounds. So Jesus, since you were actually a performer, uh, in this show, what, how, how disappointed were you when, when, when you got to the venue? Yeah, I mean, disappointed isn't necessarily the word I would use just because it's like, uh, it, was, it, w- it wasn't the optimal conditions, as you mentioned, like the wood floors don't really make the sound reverberate the way you want it. And uh, you have to pound much harder <laughs> to make right. it sound a little bit louder. Um, so, uh, but I think the team overall, you know, we understood the nature of the event. It was an exhibition, you know, it wasn't a competition. It was, you know, we were going to be put in front of hundreds of people to highlight our organization. So it was exciting again, because it hadn't been done before for us. It was, you know, it was an uh, unusual event, you know, in the middle of 1999 summer. So I think, um, it was exciting and, uh, it was something new. So we were all, you know, we were all going to, even if it was pouring rain that day which fortunately it didn't uh, right. we all were going to just bring our best and and highlight our organization the way we wanted to plus we had some things in store that we didn't share but we'll talk about shortly <laughs> right all right, right so um you know people ask also you know were, were there any guiding principles for this first show and honestly there no there weren't any principles we just wanted to do an event that brought teams together, organizations together to highlight, you know, showcase a step or a type of stroll. Did Lamp Theta Phi perform in the show? Yes, they did. They, they, See, they look, had a team. There you go. There you go. So, you know, they, they saluted, obviously, because they don't participate in uh, the other aspects of it. So, yeah, I just wanted to do a show. There were no goals at all. Um, so, yeah, so b- basically, uh, in terms of once I, started, once I started contacting teams to see, hey, to let them know, hey, we want to do this show, we'd like you to be a part of it, you know, I, there wasn't like any immediate resistance at all. Um, but at the same time, like I wasn't under pressure. I didn't need like eight teams, how like once the, this company evolves, like we needed to crank out more shows quicker. And when you're cranking out shows four months apart in different cities, you do have pressure to have a certain amount of teams to make it a, a, you know, a viable show. 
Yeah, I think also another thing it just I hadn't thought about this prior to this conversation, but like I remember so we're talking about 1999 and I, I, I rewind a bit to 1996. That's when I pledged the fraternity um, uh, Lambda Usla Lambda. And uh, I remember in 1996 when I was being recruited for the organization, I attended several step shows actually. One was at, one was at Duke University, 1996. And I remember being in the audience and, and just feeling the energy of that event wow. and it was just so amazing and that was three years prior to this show so it's it's mm. it's amazing that it took that long like contextually to kind of become our own um, but in 1999 it finally happened so i think that it was also a piece of the excitement that led us into that kind of world you know it's funny you mentioned that because I, I had forgotten that that actually happened do you, so do you think that you going to that duke show was like instrumental like oh. maybe so, like like sub, un, subconsciously for you to like to want to help with this yeah as i mentioned I, I was being recruited into the organization so for me seeing that and seeing the brothers of my fraternity on that stage and the love that they were receiving it was a black greek event but they were the only latino fraternity performing in it so like seeing the love that the the audience was giving them seeing the attention, I, I, you know, I was a young kid, so I wanted attention, you know, massively at that time. And so like all of those were appealing to me as I watched it from afar. Wow, that's that's very nice. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally forgot that, but I'm glad, I'm glad you did mention it. Um, all right, so then basically again, so when I was reaching out to teams, you know, I was calling them, gaining interest. As soon as, can you recall all the teams that 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 might have been in the show. Well, I know uh, Lambda Theta Phi, from the fraternity side, Lambda Theta Phi, Lambda Upsilon Lambda, and Sigma Lambda Beta were there. Yes. Um, Phi Oda Alpha. No. No, Phi Oda Alpha was not. They were also one of the saluting type organizations, but they didn't yes. participate. Um, Omega Phi Beta, Sigma Oda Alpha, Lambda Pi Upsilon. Upsilon, yeah. And oh, believe, and Alpha Rho Lambda. Was Alpha there. Rho Lambda, yes. And I, I believe Chi, Dan, Chi Upsilon Danielle, Sigma. Cl Danielle Cleland. Yes, yes, Danielle. Yeah. Should be great to have on a future episode. Uh, Danielle's a doctor, I think, now. She doesn't have Dr. time for... Cleland. <laughs> she doesn't have time for childishness talk conversation. Uh, I doubt it. I think we, we, you know, like, the thing we can't overlook is that we played such a such an important role for a lot of these Latinos in, and Latinas in college at the time. We gave them something to kind of build around, like the schedule of events, you know, like they always had it on their calendars, Mark, when our shows were gonna be. So I think we created experiences that were for the most part positive. So people remember how you make them feel ultimately. And, and I think that if we reach out to Danielle, you know, again, in a future date or, or any other stepper or stroller that we worked with, like, depending on Steve, the have we come up with an email or something where people can contact us when they, if they want to a be on the show or send in a memory. Cause I, I was thinking that it'd be nice if people, whoever yeah, was yeah. Um, at any of the shows, once we discuss them or any, anything, just record something. Send it to us. We can play. Do we have? We don't have anything set up yet. That's right? a, actually a good idea. We'll, we'll we'll send when we post this episode. I guess we'll we'll create an email where they can forward stuff to us. But yeah, that'd be that'd be cool to get like some video. Well, actually, we do have Greekster.tv at Gmail working. Okay, that that could be it. Greekster.tv at Gmail. Um, cool. So so let's get back to our Roberto Clemente State Park because I know we we, yes. we we always tangent off, but let, let's, where, let's where, talk about where it. were we with Roberto Clemente State so, Park? So um, you had contacted the teams, you had identified there were about seven or eight that were interested in part performing, and then what's next? You know, like right. What? So what 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 happened along the way was that I think I think they had they must I must have given them like a six or seventh month lead time in terms of preparing for the show. So if the show was like July. They must have known this show was happening from like January. I'm pretty certain. Yeah. So again, because I was new and I, I didn't really know what I was doing, I'm sure I wasn't following up with these teams as you need to. Uh, as I learned along the way, like you need to be touching, touching base with a team once a week. Right. Would you say or how? 
at the time at the time it was yeah it was less obvious like social media wasn't big back then so it's not like you could track them or or message them easily right so yeah it was calls everything was like word of mouth yeah phone calls so so basically you know i would touch base with these teams i, I don't even remember what i was saying to them was i saying hey how's everything going like i couldn't even imagine what type of small talk i was i was like saying but um you know things progressed i believe that uh neta you know what neta was also contacting teams i remember um maybe she was actually doing the sororities and i, I could have been doing the, the, the fraternities mm-hmm. um in terms of contacting so yeah i was just again just following up with them making sure that they were ready to go for the show uh talking about logistics you know as you get closer to the show you want to let teams know you know we we, we want you uh we'd like you know we, we want to have all teams at the show by a certain time so they could do a walkthrough um and you know go through their routine on stage to get a, a feel for it. do you remember as soon as about walkthroughs did we do a walkthrough that day yeah yeah i mean every team had a slotted amount of time to get up on right. there it was like five minutes it wasn't long but just to feel out the floor um for those who weren't there it was it was a high school gymnasium and it had it literally had basketball <laughs> Uh, rims on both sides and then there was bleacher right. style seating that could accommodate yeah. maybe and rubber floors rubber, rubber floors floor. yeah and that was it it was just like an open space that you show yes. up and there was no stage no um, stage the microphone system was very uh rudimentary as i recall like it was a microphone maybe one of those like local mics where you just pull up and operate it so uh yeah, the conditions weren't optimal, but it was, you know, an exhibition, so. Right, 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 right. So, uh, all right, so, you know, finally the day arrives, uh, and I actually have to show, and we'll also, I guess, put it on social media. I'm Look at that sure flyer, the- man. So many words. So Legit. messy. Yeah, <laughs> I was doing, yeah, this is when you have to do everything yourself. You have to do, coordinate the show, market the show, create the flyer for the show. Why did you why did you use that visual that background do you remember well so i don't know if you can see it but basically it's it's the background images of like a thousand not a thousand a lot many many white men just waiting around standing around but just just a picture of people waiting around yeah standing so that's what i was anticipating like millions of people wanting to go to the bronx to watch that's funny uh, eight teams perform so the flyer, it says, the highly anticipated Latino Greek Summer Second Show Show, July 24th, 1999, 10 a.m. It's a very early show. Some people don't even wake up before 10 a.m., but <laughs> we were asking people to go to 10 a.m. That is early for a show. Uh, Roberta Clemente State Park Gymnasium, West Tremont Avenue and Matheson Road, Bronx, New York. For directions, call the park. For info, email Neta. Neta was a Columbia student at the time, so we have her her Columbia email address. Nice. Um, so yeah, so again, uh, because we, I was new and we were young and planning, you know, you, you don't want to do events at 10 a.m., but I guess if they're free, I guess you could do a, a, 10, a free 10 a.m. event. Yeah, as um, I recall, it, it didn't start till maybe noon, and then that's we didn't right. end till like 4 p.m., so it was probably the longest step show you've ever gone to. <laughs> you are you are correct. I did not I did not remember that. Um, so yeah, so again, uh, a big shout out to Karen Pedrosa for, you know, coming through with a venue, because again, without a venue, um, there is no show, because you have nothing to, no place for it. Um, in terms of the MC, so we'll start with like who MC the show. Do you remember Jesus? Who yeah, it was a combination, um, but mostly uh, I believe it was Rob Robert Pacheco and uh, oh. Neta Babahani. They had kind of like the co yes. MC experience. I'm totally remembering that. Yeah, yeah, that that was cool. And, and what's again, what's fun now to look back on is like you know, no one ever has experience with like MCing a show or or doing anything so it's like you know they're just winging it just like just like nobody's business so um so yeah uh but 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 you want to talk to tell people as soon share about your your preparing your your team experience like preparing for this show actually how long were you guys practicing for 
to yeah. give like listeners like an idea of how much time and work it actually takes to you know to, yeah. to practice and, and perform a I step mean, show i, I want to say that we went really hard practicing for like three months uh prior to the event um, it, it was hard to gather i think there were nine of us at the time um, we had a couple of brothers from like rochester from new paltz from just schools that were very far away so we would have to kind of wait for them and their spring breaks to do even That's the true. group practice um and yeah it was uh, I, I was a resident assistant at the time at, uh, in, at new york university and we used we used a, a, a little room in the basement that that we could rent out to practice and, and i remember being like a local celebrity <laughs> at the dorm dorm hall because people would see this group of seven or eight, you know, Latino men downstairs practicing and, and working hard and trying to get the show right. And uh, it was it was a lot of work, but at the time we didn't care. You know, we, we were representing right. our organization. We were having fun. We were going out after the practices to, you know, have, have a beer sometimes. So it was it was a good good experience overall. And we were excited, like I said, just to put ourselves in the best light possible. Right. Right, right, that's that's a good point. So again, yeah, I mean, it's it, it takes up months, which is why when you're planning an event like this, you do need to give teams like a big lead time. You need months because it's hard to put a new step show together. And as we'll discuss in later, ep you know, episodes, like we had and we had to end, we ended up ch uh, changing the business or kind of our show style because stepping was way, way too difficult, and we ended up doing strolling uh because it was just faster easier and more fun to kind of you know do those type of shows right yeah 